The following is a production of the University of Minnesota, driven to discover. Hi, this is David Arendale. I'm a faculty member here at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities, and you're listening to the first episode of PAL Groups, an audio podcast that will come out on a periodic basis. The subject of the podcast are interviews with students who serve as facilitators of study review groups both here at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities and other colleges and other places. The purpose of these short interviews, which last anywhere from about 8 to 12 minutes or so, are to identify some successful practices that they've used in their classes in order to be able to help students to be able to master the academically challenging material. Many of these students are doing so in first and second year courses, but also they're offered in other classes here at the university as well. They have five basic questions. As I said, one of the questions is, what are some successful practices that they've used? And maybe you'll get some new ideas here that you can consider for using in your own study group sessions. The final question in the interview is focused on what are they receiving personally and professionally out of this experience. So much of the focus about providing academic support services or learning enrichment for students is always focused on the students who are having some challenges in the course. This will be interesting to hear what students end up sharing that they're receiving as being the facilitator. You notice I end up using the word facilitator. The reason why I do so is that whenever I talk about a study group facilitator, it means that they're not re-lecturing. They're not attempting to reproduce what it was that the course instructor has already has done. In a sense, we're trying to shift the power from being focused upon what answers it is that the study group leader or facilitator can provide and instead redirect that energy back to the group. Because part of the goal for any study review group is that at some point, have you acquired enough skills? Have you received enough encouragement? Do you feel more confident so that you can be able to be successful regardless of whether or not there's a study review group available in a course? It'll be fascinating listening to the interviews. I'm going to look forward to those. Those will end up coming out on a periodic basis. If you'd also like to be able to follow along with some other resources that are available online, go to the blog site, which serves as the homepage for this podcast. And that's at palgroups.org, P-A-L-G-R-U-P-S dot O-R-G. Well, why don't we end up calling them PAL Groups? Well, that stands for Peer Assisted Learning. It's a really common term that's used around the world in order to describe these kinds of study review sessions. Now, the brand names of particular programs, maybe you may be familiar with, things like supplemental instruction. Well, that's one that I'm pretty familiar with. I spent nearly over a decade working at the University of Missouri, Kansas City with other colleagues to help by training programs and professional development for other colleges to be able to adopt and adapt that program. And as this present time here, recording here in 2009, I think that the count is up to nearly 1,500 colleges and more than 30 countries have adopted the SI model. But you know, it's not the only one that's out there. There's another one that's called uh, Structured learning assistance. That comes out of Ferris State University, and there's a number of schools have adopted that. Another major program is called peer-led team learning. Oftentimes, that particular program is focused on introductory science courses. With peer-led team learning, which has been implemented at more than 150 colleges and universities across the United States, the peer-assisted learning program has actually been incorporated into the course. So students enroll not only in, let's say, the introductory chemistry course, they also end up having one hour weekly in which they're attending their PAL session, or in the case that they call it, their PLTL session. One of the oldest of the programs that are out there is called the Emerging Scholars Program. That was developed by Dr. Uri Treisman at Berkeley University back in the 1970s. And once again, it's a program that was targeted for mathematics students. In particular, it started off focusing on African-American students who were enrolled in calculus courses looking to complete a PhD in mathematics. Well, since then, the program has taken on a variety of other names and has been implemented not only at college and universities at the four-year level, but also at community colleges then. So once again, if you'd like to learn more about all of these different kinds of PAL programs that exist here, that exist, then please go to the palgroups.org website and you'll notice an annotated bibliography that I maintain about every single publication that's ever been printed about any of these major post-secondary peer cooperative learning programs. As I said, we're going to be looking at interviews with people from here at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. 
At our campus, we end up calling them PAL groups. Other campuses will end up using different terms, but we all share the same desire, which is to see students do well in historically, academically challenging courses, to be able to see them be able to develop their academic skills, and also to increase their confidence, because both of those are necessary for academic success. As I said, we look forward to hearing the voices of the students, because really, in a sense, it's easy for people like me to write articles and do public presentations, but I think that the real key is being able to listen to the voices of the students talking about their experience, their excitement about serving in the role, and also what it is that they're receiving. The Powell phenomena is experienced at colleges and universities around the world. And frankly, the models in other countries have been very important for us creating our own Powell program here at the University of Minnesota. So hopefully we'll also be able to include some voices using Skype and other technologies to bring from other campuses and other countries then. So hope you end up enjoying the series. Once again, I hope that you have chosen to subscribe to this through iTunes because that's the easiest way to make sure that these episodes end up appearing on your computer on a regular basis. If not, uh, you can always check out and download individual episodes by going to the palgroups.org blog page and you can simply click on a link then. But however it is that you end up accessing the program, I think you're going to have a great experience. So let's go ahead and sign off for this first episode. Next episode will end up featuring the beginning of these interviews then. Take good care and good listening.